Thank you very much. And good morning. How's everybody feeling in Madrid? Getting there? I'm sure tonight we have a different answer. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here, and this is perhaps uh, the most important time that we address you, our partners, our customers, and prospects as frequently as possible. Microsoft is moving at a neck-breaking pace these days. There's a lot of changes in the organization. I joined Microsoft about 10 years ago, and I have never seen the pace of innovation, the pace of product delivery, and release cycles like we have today. With these changes, it's important that we address our key ISVs, like LS Retail, our partners, and our customer base as frequently as possible, which is why it's my distinct pleasure to talk to you today about the changes that are coming this year. And perhaps the, uh, the cue and the, the hint is in the title. In the title it says, Dynamics NAV and says Dynamics 365. And indeed, I'm responsible for both. And perhaps in that sense, uh, I'm the architect behind the white elephant in the room and find my responsibility to tell you how we're going to handle the white elephant in the room. But let's take a first a little journey, a little trip into realizing how we created Dynamics 365 and the evolution of NAV, this great product that for decades has served thousands of customers and is now serving customers in the cloud as well. So I'm going to take you a quick little journey about the evolution of NAV. Does anybody remember this screen? Right. So this is one of the first incarnations of the experiences we deliver. A ASCII user experience, a two-tier client with an ISIM database connection, and of course the way partners would interact with the system is by us shipping code and partners creating solutions by modifying that code and creating customizations. <coughs> to this day, it still baffles me when I think about it. It still is quite incredible to think that some of the code, the application code that run on that ASCII UI is today running on Azure at scale, at hyperscale across multiple mobile devices and delivering the experience we have today. And that, to me, is real engineering. To Magnus's point, the newcomers in the cloud, they can move fast and create solutions which are born in the cloud, but to have that depth of functionality and that history of that depth of functionality is really our differentiator. And being able to transform these products from that point to where they are now is, in many ways, our value proposition. So from there, we moved on to the next point in time, which is the classic client and the classic UI. Anybody remembers that? Right. So this is the first time we had the graphical user interface, and we had a, still a two-tier experience connected to the ISM database, and the experience of changing was still a code customization experience. And from there, we moved on to one of the biggest changes we have made in the product, which is a three-tier re-architecture with the Windows 32 and a role Taylor client. I'm sure many of you remember that point in time. And this was a point at which there was a lot of changes required by partners, by ISVs and Microsoft. It was a big shift. It was a tectonic shift. But it's difficult to project things in the future, how they're going to play. But when you look in the past, it's so clear to me and to my organization that that point in time, that those decisions that were made back then, was effectively the birth of Dynamics 365. Without the three-tier architecture and the changes we made there, there would not be any future for this product, and there would not be any future for your businesses. We're running in a three-tier architecture, now against the SQL database as part of Microsoft, and the customization model was still a code customization-based model. And then as we move along, we reach the modern age. And at this point, which is where we are right now, Dynamics NAV is broken away from having the one client and being a multitude of clients. We go from one client experience to the mobility of experiences, where your data and business processes are not tied to a particular machine, but they're liberated and go with you wherever you are, 
whether it's on a mobile device, on a web, on a desktop, inside Office 365, inside of SharePoint, in the cloud, on-premise. And for that, we had to create a four-tier architecture with the HTML5 client and mobile clients. And of course, we're running against Azure SQL databases as a native cloud service. And as of a couple of years now, we've introduced a new way for partners and ISVs to modify the application, which is through extensions. <coughs> now, a couple of years ago, when we introduced extensions, there's a lot of questions about them. And my answer was, the answer is extensions, tell me what the question is. Really, one of the key things we've made investments in is to make the ability that all these value propositions we talk about is transferable in the future. Because everything I talked about doesn't make any sense if your next upgrade is going to be in a way of new technology adoption and new capabilities adoption. Extensions is what enables that for ISVs and for partners that are customizing and implementing. Extensions is the key to our IP and customizations in the future. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So this evolution brought us to a point around almost exactly this time last year in April <clears throat> where we launched Project Madeira. And this caused a lot of attention from the press, from the analysts, because for the first time, Dynamics ERP is launching a true SaaS multi-tenant service in the cloud. But to us, it wasn't so important that we launch a cloud service just by hosting the servers in the cloud, because that's hardly a differentiator. To us, what was really important at that time is to make true the promises we have made for many years about Microsoft business processes and Microsoft productivity tools truly working together. So one of the key demos we did around that time, which really for the first time materialized to people what a modern SaaS business solution could look like, was really taking the experiences of Dynamics NV, taking them to the cloud, putting them inside of Office 365, whether it's Outlook, Excel, SharePoint, and making sure that those processes and those experiences for the customer flow seamlessly across different Microsoft products in single sign-on and the same experience and snap right into the context of the user's daily workflows. This combination of these experiences is really what caused a lot of attention and brought a lot of interest in what Microsoft is going to do next. And of course, what followed next from Project Madeira uh, a few months later was the launch of Dynamics 365. And just as a reminder, Dynamics 365, again, while the 365 name clearly denotes it's a cloud-first offering, it is not just about moving our solutions into the cloud. It is also about having differentiated value propositions, which there are four of in Dynamics 365. First, one thing we focused hard on is to make each of the apps in Dynamics 365 purpose-built so that the customers can choose if they want to adopt first the sales part of their processes, the finance, or all together, they can start from finance, add sales later, or they can start from an ISV solution like LS Retail, which is available in AppSource, and from there, go and add additional components. So that purpose-built model, which avoids this big bang implementation, but allows customers to incrementally add to their solutions, was one of the key differentiators we wanted to build. The next one is about productivity. And productivity is, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about productivity as sort of like a default value proposition, but we have, in Microsoft, one of the fastest and largest cloud services for productivity in the world, Office 365. There's a lot of people in this world running Office 365. So it was clear to us that we need to make sure that Office 365, as well as Dynamics, are very close together in first-class citizen Microsoft offering across the board, across the products, across office applications. And this is one of the key elements we focused on. And we see, since we launched Project Madeira and Dynamics 365, we see some of our competitors starting to copy us in terms of productivity integration with Office. But we also see them copying us in other areas, like intelligence. Everybody's talking intelligence now. We have our competitors having Watsons and Einsteins and all the other smart men out there. But we have a very smart lady that eats them for breakfast. Her name is Cortana. 
And with the integration with Cortana intelligence, we bring that intelligence inside of Dynamics 365. But what's more important is not just that we enable Cortana intelligence, but how we do it. We make it seamless to the user that is even machine learning running in the background. The user doesn't even know. It's just the value of predictive analytics that surface to the user. And it is also the simplicity in which partners can build predictive analytics on Azure Machine Learning without ever knowing the details of R and Azure ML and all those perhaps complex technologies. It's very simple, intuitive. If you know to develop in CAL, you can build predictive analytics in NAV and in Dynamics 365. The last but not the least is adaptable. Uh, the brand Dynamics itself carries the key value proposition in its name, a dynamic way to be able to adapt solutions to the customers. And we hold on dear to that. We have, whether it's the native development and customization experiences and all the apps in Dynamics 365, or whether it's the new additions that we're focusing hard now, which is Power Apps and Flow, gives you the ability not just to deliver value to the customer, but to deliver value to the customer in a quickly adaptable way, which is served for the purpose of the customer, the way exactly the customer wants it for their organization. So all this together comes in this picture which is really the, in, the, in terms of the business edition, uh, which is what I focus on, about the key apps that we have, which is finance, financials, sales, and marketing. And all these apps, of course, work together seamlessly. But what's more important is that these apps together work with Office 365 on one side, as well as other Microsoft key services, such as Power BI, Azure IoT, Cortana Intelligence on the other side, to bring unique value propositions like the ones I mentioned before. On the bottom, it's connected on the common platform, which makes it easy for us and for partners like LS Retail to keep on building value on this platform and maintain those value propositions. And last but not the least, a super important part is the app source, which is on top, the central place, central location for all things of, intelligence, uh, of intellectual property that's delivered by partners to the customers and where Microsoft is going to put a lot of investment in driving traffic into. It's our app store. It's a place where if you have IP, if you have an app, if you have solutions, it is the place where everybody's going to go to get their solutions and, and experience them. So this is what we have with Dynamics 365. This is what we have created over these years. And this community of ISVs, like Ellis Retail, the partners, and our customers, is really the only community that has all the pieces. Our competitors are coming with similar type of integrations with other systems, but Microsoft is the only company that can offer all these pieces and technologies together in a seamless offering. Around the same time that year, last year, we also announced Dynamics NV 2017 as the next iteration of the evolution of Dynamics NAV. As a, a reminder, here are the things we introduced in Dynamics NAV 2017. Just like with Dynamics 365, we integrate seamlessly with Office 365. Just like in Dynamics 365, we enable embedded Power BI experiences, which are now contextual Power BI experiences. For a long time in this evolution process of these different changes, I had a lot of questions from our customers and partners saying, you're focusing a lot on technology and technology shift. What about the core functionality? <clears throat> so Dynamics NAV 2017, we started our journey to reinvent some of the core pieces of the application to bring simpler user experiences and introduce easy setup and configuration so it's easier than ever to get started with NAV 2017 and to upgrade to NAV 2017. Whether you are on previous versions or you're a competitive product, we made it easy to data migration tools to upgrade to NAV 2017. And we started investing into the core areas such as finance, jobs, CRM, inventory, and also integrating with other cloud services through something we call e-everything in order to enable your solutions to be in that cloud. And when it comes to new opportunities, with these new Microsoft services and technologies, we create new opportunities for partners. If all you have ever done is add fields and modify code, that is still great. We can still do that. 
We can still make changes to the forms. We can still create extension-based customizations and solutions. We'll talk about it in a second. But one of the key things that we have is really that now we offer new opportunities to create predictive analytics for customers, to use power ups and flow to deliver that last mile of experience for customers, to use notifications. To me, notifications is such a small feature, but such an important part of our offering dynamics in AV. The reason why I'm so excited about it is because I tend to say that a lot of ERCP systems are very lazy. They just sit there and do nothing until the user comes up to them and performs some action. And with notifications, we have this ability for the system to work on the data and reach out to the user for the user to take action and completely turn around how that experience looks like as the user interacts with the system. So we're really focusing on that side of the uh, interactivity. And of course, extensions is a way to deliver IP and changes, which is safe to upgrades and allows you to quickly get to the latest versions. So exciting release as well. And uh, with all these changes, it wasn't just for the sake of change. It was also because we wanted to ensure that our collective businesses are going to be successful together. Over the last couple of decades, we served about 100,000 customers. And in 2014, we gave ourselves a challenge over the next five years to serve another 100,000 customers. Clearly an accelerated ambition based on investments we made in the product. I'm happy to say that we're nicely tracking towards that goal. Dynamics NAV and Dynamics 365 are both growing at a faster pace than ever before. And we have a tremendous momentum both in the market, with our partners, and within Microsoft as well. A lot of attention in Microsoft. And <clears throat> if I think about this progression, this acceleration of our growth, I can't also but mention the community. If I look at this graph, and I look at this graph, which is the attendance of Directions EMEA, one of our key conferences that happens every fall, you will see an accelerated growth in the attendance. We're going to expect around 2,000 people this year, and I strongly encourage you all to attend. And some would say, well, that is clear. If you have a successful business, a successful product, you're going to have a growing community. I would say it's the other way around. I would say the reason why we are successful and why the product is growing is because of the passion and the commitment of this community of all of you that are here. So before I continue what we're taking the products in the future, I just want to take one moment to say a big thank you to all of you. Thank you for being great partners, great customers, and bringing our businesses to success together. <clears throat> so with all these changes last fall, I came back after the conference season after we launched Dynamics 365, and with all the excitement about it, with all the uh, buzz in the press from the analyst and the growth of the product, I felt very accomplished and happy with the success we have. And then I started looking at it a little bit from the critical eye and uh, realized that effectively, with all these changes and transformations, by creating the white elephant in the room, the cloud, we may have created, for a lot of you, for a lot of our partners, effectively a fork in a road. We, by announcing Dynamics 365 as a separate product to Dynamics NAV, we created, uh, unambiguously, we created a choice for a lot of our partners. Is it one or is it the other? And in doing so, creating a fork in a road is very risky for all of our partners' businesses. Do I invest in one? And what if the other succeeds? Do you invest in both? And that, what does it mean for my business? Am I investing enough then if I'm hedging? So looking back at that, I realized that, hey, you know, while it's certainly uh, fantastic what we've done with this product and evolution of Dynamics 365, we need to ensure that we bring the channel together with us. And uh, what it did over the last half a year is basically talked and listened and listened and listened to a lot of our partners of course, worked very closely with LS Retail and other ISVs and made sure that I hear and understand what are the things that are getting in the way to making the right decision on this fork on the road. And one thing I realized is that the problem is not which decision you make. The problem is that we created is there is a fork in the road. 
So everything we did this year, and that you're going to see happen in 2017, towards the end of this year, is about removing the fork on the road. And the thing that removes the fork on the road is the iteration we call Tenerife, which is this year's investment in our products. As you know, we codename our iterations by islands. And Tenerife is a very strong investment with one purpose and one purpose only. To ensure, just like Magnus said, that any investment any of you have made in the Dynamics NAV business is transferable and safe between the cloud and on-premise, between Dynamics 365 and Dynamics NAV. So here are the key investments we're making this year, which I think you should be excited about. First of all, we're going to expand the functional footprint of Dynamics 365 for financials to include full Dynamics NAV functionality by the end of this year. So Dynamics 365 for financials become, in every way, synonymous to Dynamics NAV. All the functionality you have in Dynamics NAV, including advanced manufacturing, is going to be available in Dynamics 365 for financials. Let me try this the other way around. All the functionality in Dynamics 365 for financials is going to be the equivalent functionality you have in Dynamics NAV. Not just this year, but every year and continuously. We're going to involve these products continuously. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a second. So full functional footprint of Dynamics NAV. We listened to a lot of partners. A lot of partners told us financials is great the way it is for a lot of smaller volume businesses. But for the kind of customers that we serve, we need the full functional footprint of NAV. So we're going to give you that by the end of this year. You'll still be able to switch on the financials experience if that's what you want, which is a smaller, simple experience. Or you can switch back the full NAV experience in Dynamics 365 for financials if this meets your business needs. The second part is we listened to one of the key complaints, of course, because financials was available in US and Canada only. So we're going to expand Dynamics 365 for financials to more countries this year in the key markets and even more countries in the next year as we keep on going. Perhaps more importantly for our community where ISVs like LS Retail are the key driver of growth and success, we're going to enable ISVs globally on Dynamics 365 for financials. So this means that even in the countries where we don't have financials offered by Microsoft as a SaaS service, ISVs can take their solutions, like LS Retail, and deploy it on the Dynamics 365 platform and offer their solutions in those geographies, even if Microsoft is not leading with financials as their own solution in those countries. And in doing so, benefit from all the key value propositions of that platform and the ecosystem. Be able to have seamless integration with Office, integration with other apps in the Dynamics 365 family, Cortana Intelligence, IoT, Power BI, all these things come together on the platform as uh, ISVs like us we to deploy to that platform. The next thing we also heard about is no matter how, simply, how much you simplify the solution and no matter how much you improve the experience, you will always need that last mile of the customer experience, that last bit of customization that makes the customer solution their own. In Dynamics 365 today, we don't allow customization. But with the development of the incline designer, the development extensions, we're also going to enable extension-based customization for individual customers in Dynamics 365. So with that, what it means, with a new incline designer and modern developer experience, you can create customer-specific solutions for the customers on top of solutions like LS Retail or on top of the base application, if you so wish. It needs to be done through extensions, but we enable you to do that in the most attractive way ever with the incline designer and the modern developer experience, which is the next key thing we're focusing on this year. So by the end of the year, what's now in preview, which is the modern developer experience, is going to become available for Dynamics NAV and Dynamics 365. And this experience is really what gives you that power that's always differentiated NAV as a product. Now, in a modern, cloud-first, mobile-first way. So on one side, you have the incline designer or in-app designer, where you can easily make modifications to the product as you see it. 
A lot of people want to do it in a visual way because that's what they're focusing on. You can move fields around the form, you can remove them, you can add them, you can create new pages, you can add new fields, you can do all the things you could do in formerly in Seaside, now inside of the client. And as you do that, you can transition to the more code-focused experience and round trip between those two. And our code experience is now in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code the, is the most modern incarnation of a development environment there is in the market, and it's the fastest open source growing community in the world. And now you can write code in Visual Studio Code and AL, or in .NET using Azure Functions, and you can round trip between the in-cloud experience in Visual Studio Code to deliver your solutions and customizations faster and easier than ever before. So just to illustrate this to you, you could imagine a situation in the very near future where you can provision from App Source an LS retail application for a customer, get them to run that application in seconds, go into that uh, meeting with a customer, start that tenant, open the in-app designer, make your customizations, and still get the next upgrade when it comes with no effort whatsoever, and have that run across all devices, across all experiences, across all different vendors. That is incredibly powerful. But one key message that we have in terms of what we're doing this year, and this is perhaps the message that a lot of you wanted to hear, and this is this slide. Dynamics 365 for financials is Dynamics NAV because they are the same code base and they're going to continue being the same code base. So a few months ago, we, when we launched Dynamics 365, to reach hyperscale that we're uh, planning for with Microsoft, we were convinced that we had to fork the code base in order to create the experiences that we could create for Dynamics 365. With some technological advances we made, we managed to do it in such a way where we do not need to split the code bases for Dynamics NV and Dynamics 365. We can take the same code base and run it in cloud, at hyperscale, low cost, high maintainability, which is what you need in the cloud to have a true SaaS multi-tenant cloud solution, and take that same code base and deploy it on-premise and even benefit from the investments in the cloud on-premise as well. So with this key piece of information, we are ensuring that there is no more a fork in a road. If you're investing to Dynamics NAV, you're investing to the same code base, which is Dynamics 365. If you're investing in Dynamics 365, you're investing in the same code base, which is Dynamics NAV. And your investments are transferable. If you build an extension, you can move it between on-cloud and on-premise. If you're building a solution, you can deploy it on-premise, and you can deploy it in the cloud, just like Magnus said. And this is one of the res results of a very close cooperation we have between Microsoft and OS Retail and other ISVs to ensure that we meet their needs and thereby meet all of your needs for your businesses. So with this slide and everything we're doing this year, I'm hoping to remove the fork and thereby remove the fear of failure of making perhaps the wrong decision for a business. Because any decision you make is in the direction of the future, whether it's on cloud or in the premise. And by removing the fear of failure, the only thing that's left is really the opportunity for success. I like to think that every business is faced with two fears they need to overcome. One is the fear of failure, and the other one is also the fear of success. I believe that we're giving you everything you need to be successful against your competition. And the only message I can leave you with is don't be afraid to succeed. Thank you very much.